All right, guys, and we are back with another episode of the Brutal Optimist podcast. Well, I just spent, um, I don't even know how long, maybe an hour or so, I recorded a podcast, I reworked it, I edited it, um, I was uploading it, and while I was uploading, I decided to listen to it one more time, and it was horrible. Um, I started out, I was talking about a, a stoic philosophy of negative visualization, I started talking about it, and then I transitioned into um, some other, uh, I think I maybe got into Buddhist philosophy for a while, and then went back to stoicism. It was just crazy, um, and made, I don't know, it, it probably did make some sense, but just the way I put it together, I just was not happy with that at all. So I just hit delete. And now we're starting over. So what are we going to talk about? What uh, we're going to talk about today? Uh, well, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I was trying to talk about then. But maybe I can explain it in some better terms. There's this idea in... Uh, in Buddhist philosophy, that life is impermanent. Right? There's this complete coming and going of things. Sometimes we have, sometimes we don't have. People are born, people die. In your life, you have times of sickness and times of health. Nothing fully lasts. And also in Buddhism, they'll tell you that suffering comes from our attachment to things. And I think this is a good point um, to understand. Now, oftentimes we attach to things thinking they're permanent, but they're not. And so when they're gone, it it, that's what brings our suffering, our pain, our agony, right? Now, I'm not um, really talking about Buddhism here. I'm just starting off with the with, uh, principle they discuss. Uh, I'm not a Buddhist, and I don't really know uh, that much in great detail. But I think this concept has a lot of overlap in different parts of our lives. And I was talking um, to a patient the other day that had been struggling with depression. And so I asked them kind of what they wanted from life. And all the things that they wanted, that they felt like would make them happy, were things that they couldn't control. And they were, it was things that were impermanent. Now, it's easy for me to say this because, I mean, we all want things in our lives that we can't control. I mean, we want our kids to be happy. And we can give our kids, uh, you know, a, a good home, a loving place, a safe place. We want our kids to be successful in life. And we can give them everything, you know, that we think could lead to their success, right? We can't force that on. Um, we we want our spouse to love us and care for us, and we can do everything and care for them and love them, but we can't force them to love us. Nor would we, would we really want to be in a relationship like that. So, but how often? Do we wrap up our happiness in these things that are so far out of our control that it just becomes, you know, ludicrous to think that we could manipulate it into making us happy? 
Because if my happiness relies on you doing something, what does that say about our relationship? You know, what does that say about my success and happiness? Particularly, long-term happiness. Let me give you another example. Um, I'm a family physician. I treat a full range of illnesses. But one thing that I seem to treat a lot of, um, because there's not a lot of other specialists in this area where I'm at, is addiction. So I've kind of, um, over the last 10 years, I've dedicated myself to learning more about addiction and becoming um, as much of a specialist in addiction, medication, treatment as I can. And there's a whole nother background story there that I won't get into, but a lot of my patients who struggle with addiction, they have this problem. Their happiness is caught up in their sobriety. And you would think, well, is that not a good thing? Well, it is a good thing to be sober. It's a good thing to be clean. It's a good thing to not be controlled by addiction. But if your happiness is is centered around you being perfect, then I'm sorry. Prepare to be disappointed. Okay. All right. You're thinking you've got my attention. Then how am I supposed to be happy? I mean, everything in life seems to be out of our control if you take it to the extreme. And I would say this. Maybe life isn't about being happy at all. That doesn't mean that being happy is not a good thing. Yes, it's a good thing. I want you to be happy. I want you to have the best life you could possibly have. But I know that you're not going to be 100% happy in this life. So there's got to be something else. And this is what it is. It's living with a purpose. It's following that purpose down whatever path it takes you. And that journey is going to have some problems along the way. You're going to have your demons to fight. You're going to have your valleys to go through. But every time you get past, every time you get past the valley, every time you get through over the next hill, every time you get through the low point in your life, if you're following this purpose, you're going to find yourself stronger, wiser, and I'm going to say happier. But it's not going to be easy, okay? And it's not going to be uh, 100% all fun and games. You're not going to wake up tomorrow and say, ha, I've got my purpose, and now I'm living it, and now life is great. No. But you're going to take one step in that direction. You're going to start tomorrow taking one step towards your purpose, toward the path you're supposed to be walking. And that one step is going to lead to the next step. And every day, you're going to get a little bit closer. See, it's not really a goal you're going after. It's just living this process, this path. And it doesn't have to be some grand thing. It could be anything. And what's great is, just like you can't put your happiness in things that you can't control, well, guess what? You do get to control you. 
you get to control if you take this path, if you follow this process, if you go down into this journey and see where it takes you. You get to decide if you're going to ignore all the people that are bringing all that negativity into your life. You get to decide if you're going to embrace the positivity. You get to decide if you're going to say today is the day that I'm not going to wallow in my self-pity and my self-doubt anymore. You get to decide if you're going to believe in yourself. You can't wait till your spouse believes in you. You can't wait till your kids are out of the house. You can't wait till you have the perfect job. You can't control those things. But you get to decide, you can control what you do today. And if you're gonna start this process, I would invite you down the path. Take the rabbit hole, see where it leads. All right, guys, it's Dr. Chris Park, and I'm out of here.